Hi, this is Dr. Jeff Zeig in Phoenix, Arizona, in my office at the offices of the Milton Erickson Foundation with another five-minute tip for therapists, and thank you so much for joining me. The first five-minute tip of 2018 was attunement. I want to continue attunement too, because this is a broad topic. As I said, it's a topic that I'm currently preparing for a book. Attunement is the basis of empathy. It's the physiological basis, the psychological basis, the social basis of empathy. We are designed to respond implicitly. For example, we are at a theater, somebody coughs and there's a cacophony of coughs. Somebody claps and other people clap. Two people who are walking down the street, perhaps not even knowing each other, will attune their steps. People who are sitting next to each other at a sporting event might attune their posture. We are designed to respond and not necessarily realize that response. We are social creatures. We like to be attuned. We like to go to the movies together, laugh, cry together, to a sporting event together, to cheer together. Attunement is, is, is part of our biological design. Now, communicators, as I talked about in the last five minute video, can attune consciously. What can we attune to? In the last video, I was attuning to Rachel's posture, to her nonverbal behavior, to her eye blink, to her breathing rate, to her posture, to her gestures. But we can also attune to people verbally. Like we could attune to the speed of speech of someone. We could attune to the metaphors that someone uses. We could attune to the tone of voice. And what we're doing is acting as tuning forks, as if the one person is going mm, verbally or non-verbally, and what we're doing in responding is we're going mm, verbally or non-verbally. This sets up a feeling of likability, a feeling of rapport, a feeling of goodwill, and it's being done on a uh, implicit level because that's the way in which the human system is designed. We believe that a lot of our behavior is initiated consciously, but so much of our behavior is responsive. The field of social psychology demonstrates how people respond without necessarily realizing the response or without necessarily realizing the cue that led to the response. For example, we know from research that if the context changes, behavior can change. If you paint a restaurant in the United States with red colors, people spend more money. We know that in an experiment in social psychology, if there's a faint odor of lemon, which is often associated with cleaning products, people tend to clean up their, air, their space uh, more than they would do that if the faint smell of lemon was not there. Now, it's not that people recognize these things. It's just this is part of our social design. So attunement is a way to begin a relationship. If you're a parent talking to a child, if you're a, a teacher talking to a student, if you're a businessman talking with a colleague, one of the ways that you can start is to resonate with the person that, you that you're talking to. As a therapist, when I'm working with an individual, when I'm talking to an individual within the context of a couple session or a family session, I work avidly to attune myself to some aspect, especially, especially at the beginning of the relationship. Now, after having practiced this so many times in my working memory, I don't even have to think about it anymore. This is part of my procedural memory. This is who I am with people. I immediately attune. I recommend to you that you practice this in your uh, conversations with family, with friends, with clients, and demonstrate to yourself that by initiating attunement, you get a better opportunity to empathize with the person with whom you're talking. 
So thank you very much. This is Jeff Zeig with another five minute tip for therapists. You know, we're such a powerful force in our clients' lives when they come and they trust us, they bring that vulnerability to us. And then can we hold that hope at a time when they can't? Can we know how to create the direction for them when they can't? As long as men strain, women are living with it and just say that's how he is and that's how men are, you know, we can preserve patriarchy intact. And so part of this conversation is maybe this is the beginning somewhere yet again of the end of patriarchy. In this moment with you right now, what am I going to be loyal to? Am I going to be loyal to my grudge? Am I going to be loyal to my point, my righteous indignation, my wounds, my triggering? Or am I going to be loyal to you and to this relationship? The victim can say, I just can't do this, I hate you, I can't be near you, can't touch you. That can happen. But wait, the perpetrator can say, I don't dig this any longer. I don't want to be the bad guy. I don't want to be the person who's always being angry at. They could get out of this thing too. So the therapist has to really hold these two. But if you want to hang in there, if you want to do this, I promise you, this relationship will be unlike it ever was. I promise that.